The presentation, What Happens When a Person Receiving Supplemental Security Income, SSI, Goes to Work, is for professionals who work with people who have disabilities, it is presented by Granite State Independent Living's Financial Planning and Benefit Services. Special Rules When a Person Goes to Work Special rules that make it possible for people with disabilities receiving SSDI and or SSI to work and still receive monthly payments and Medicare and or Medicaid are called work incentives. Please note that this presentation will focus solely on SSI work rules. There's a separate presentation for SSDI work rules. If you are working with the person who receives both SSDI and SSI benefits, you want to look at their SSDI benefit first, as a person's SSDI affects how much a person can receive in their SSI. What are some of the SSI work rules a person who goes to work can use? There's the general income exclusion, the student earned income exclusion, the earned income exclusion, impairment related work expenses, ERWIS, ERWIS can also be used with SSDI, two for one reduction, blind work expenses, plan to achieve self support, 1619B Medicaid protection, and expedited reinstatement. Please note that if a person is self-employed, there are different work rules. For these work rules, please see the self-employment presentation. What is the general income exclusion? The general income exclusion is used for two reasons. If a person is SSI and has unearned income, if they are under the age of 18, this can be countable income from parents. If they receive child support, this is not when the parents receive child support child support for a child. It's the child who is receiving the child support. SSDI, if a per or if a person is receiving SSI and has no unearned income but is working, $20 is excluded. First, if they have unearned income, $20 is excluded from the unearned income. If they have no unearned income, $20 is taken from their earnings. What is the student earned income exclusion? The student earned income exclusion helps working students to receive SSI to earn wages while they attend school. A person who may qualify for the student earned income exclusion receives SSI, is under the age of 22, is regularly attending school, and is working. Due to to determine a person's SSI cash benefit, the Social Security Administration will not count up to $1,750 of a person's wages per month, this is the 2013 rate, with the ma yearly maximum exclusion of $7,060 in 2014 while they are attending school and working. For more information on the student earned income exclusion, please see the separate presentation. Please note that if you have a client who qualifies and can use the student earned income exclusion, make sure to remind them that they still have to stay under the $2,000 SSI resource limit. When their earnings are being completely excluded, it is very easy to get close to that resource limit, but they still have to stay under. What is the earned income exclusion? When a person goes to work, Social Security will exclude $60 from a person's gross wages. Every working person who receives SSI will receive the $65 exclusion. What are impairment related work expenses, ERWIS? ERWIS allow a person to deduct the cost of items and services that are needed for them to work. The cost of these work related expenses are deducted from their gross wages. Always reduce the total, total countable income that is used when figuring a person's SSI cash benefit. Okay? The cost must be paid out of pocket by the person and not reimbursed from another source. Medicaid, Medicare, any other insurance. It has to be paid by them. For more information on payment related work expenses, please see the assess separate presentations exclusively on ERWIS. 
What is the two for one reduction? The next step Social Security does when calculating a person's countable wages is to divide by two to receive a countable earned income amount. The minimum work rules that will be applied to a working person will be the general income exclusion, the earned income exclusion, and division by two. What are blind work expenses? If a person is receiving SSI due to blindness, they are able to claim blind work expenses. Blind work expenses basically allow them to deduct any expense they incur that is related to their job. Unlike ERWIS, blind work expenses is any expense. It does not have to be related to their disability. It has to be just related to their job. It is better to take blind work expenses than it is to take impairment related work expenses. So if you have someone whose disability is blindness, please advise them to take blind work expenses over impairment related work expenses. Okay. What is a plan to achieve self support? PASS. PASS is an SSI work rule under which a person can set aside income besides their SSI cash benefit to be used to achieve specific work goals. PASS can be established to cover the cost of obtaining education, receiving vocational training, starting a business, purchasing support services, which all enable an individual to work and eventually result in reduction or sensation of benefits. When a person has an approved PASS, Social Security does not count the income that is set aside when figuring their SSI cash payment or when they determine eligibility for a PASS. For more information, please see the separate presentation on What is the 1619B medical protection? Most people receiving SSI could qualify for 1619B medical protection if their SSI payment stops because of increased earnings, such as $1,527 both per month or more in the year 2014. This is called the break-even point. <laughs> the person had gross earnings below $38,000 per year in 2014. This is called the threshold amount. They had resources below $2,000 for an individual and it's $3,000 for a couple. They used the Medicaid needs option. They had to use Medicaid in the next 10 months, expect to use Medicaid within the next 12 months, or be unable to pay medical bills in the next 12 months without Medicaid. An example of the SSI earned income calculation is John receives SSI and receives $721 per month. He is employed and earns $1,085 gross per month. You take $1,085, you minus the $85, which is the $20 of the general income exclusion and the $65 of the earned income exclusion to equal $1,000. Take that $1,000, divide by 2, he gets $500 in countable income. You take the maximum SSI benefit in 2014, which is 721. You minus his countable income of $500, and he is still eligible for $221 of an SSI cash benefit. His financial outcome is $1,085 of gross earnings plus $221 in his SSI cash benefit to equal $1,306 per month. Want more information? Here's how you can get more information. You can view the rest of the videos to learn more. You can contact Granite State Independent Living for assistance. The Financial Planning and Benefit Services phone number is 877-809-7028. The website is www.gsil.org. And the email for the Financial Planning Benefit Services is benefits at gsil.org. Visit the New Hampshire Work Incentive Resource Center for more resources at www.nhwirc.org. Contact Social Security Administration and New Hampshire's Department of Health and Human Services for more details. Social Security's website is www.ssa.gov. The Department of Health and Human Services is www.dhhs.state.nh.us. If you are connected with an area agency, mental health center, or vocational rehabilitation, you can contact them for more information and assistance.